Welcome back and thanks for joining me again today. This summer, it's been stressful for a lot of people, uh, us included. We weren't really sure if we were going to be able to carry on with our family adventures like we did last year. If you're not already familiar, you can click the link up here that'll take you to our family travel channel and you can check out the adventures from last year in Costa Rica. Well, as luck would have it, after already having a flight cancelled, we found alternative plans and we're going back to Costa Rica again this winter. So, well, that's the plan anyways. We have some bookings. We're really excited about it. Think positive. So what that's done is it's really kicked us into overdrive because we have just about, well, a little more than a month to go. We really need to figure out, well, what we're going to pack and how we're going to take everything that we need with us. So I'm going to be doing a series of packing videos, starting with this one, which I think is probably the most important. Maybe you'll agree. And that is all the camera gear that I'm going to be taking with us. So let's get into it. So here we are. I have everything, uh, the majority of everything that I'm bringing with us, packed into my camera bag. Um, now anyone that has sought out the perfect camera bag knows just how difficult that can be. Um, and I'm not saying that this is the best camera bag for everyone, but if you like the outdoors and bringing camera gear with you in an easy way that allows you to also carry a multitude of other things with you, it's not just a camera bag, um, check out Atlas. Alan will help you find the right one uh, for you. He certainly did for me, and, uh, and this is it. So I think that's where we'll start. This is the Atlas Athlete. I have the size large. It is carry-on legal, and uh, I plan to bring everything, not just my camera gear, but all of the clothes that I'm going to take for six months away in Costa Rica in this single bag. It's not fully loaded out now. I will show you that once the time comes, but let's go through the bag. So this is the back. We'll come back to this. On each side, there are very generous pockets for giant water bottles or tripods or pretty much anything else you could possibly want to carry. They're very stretchy and very easy to fit large items or lots of small items in there, as well as secure those items down with not one, but two, if you have taller items, cinch straps that are also quick release. So I'll put my tripod on one side and my water bottle on the other side. And I'm using the Camelback Shoot 750 mil, so three quarters of a liter. And it fits in no problem. It disappears in there, really. So you could easily fit a larger water bottle if you want. Or like I say, the tripod. I would show you the tripod in here, but it's being used to film this right now. Also, as many hiking packs will have uh, space for a bladder, and it's usually on the back to keep the weight towards closest to your body. Um, all the camera gear is back here, so clearly we're not putting a bladder back in there. So it's right here. There's this big zip that goes all the way down, and then it's just a huge pocket right top to bottom. So you can fit, well, geez, I'd think at least a three liter, maybe even more in there. And it even has this cool little hanging tab so you can support your bladder inside the pocket. Zip it away. And then there's routing uh, for your drinking tube to go up across the top and then out this hole here. And you can run that to the side of your choosing. On the front, there are a ton of storage options. We'll start with the top. So this big top here, right now it's, it's not loaded out at all, so it looks pretty flat. Uh, but there is a little quick stash pocket with a nice little weather resistant zipper in there. So this is just relatively small for things like flashlights, chapstick, seasonal oils. I also keep my wallet usually in here and my notebook for ideas or locations or uh, leaving notes for people. Um, you also have a tether in here. So if there's something you really don't want to lose, like keys, you can hang that in there and keep it safe. There's also lots of loops, so you can fasten all kinds of things on the outside. And then in behind there is a huge 
pocket. It's like, it's massive. I think I can pack most of my clothes for our trip just in this one pocket here, which is pretty incredible. Lots and lots of room there. And then underneath, there is yet another pocket. Not quite as big as the top, but it's still lots and lots of room. So the stuff that you might want relatively quick access to, but you don't want everybody to have quick access to, can go back in there. Again, more loops. Speaking of which, the extra tethers and poles that come with the bag. I keep those in there just for safekeeping. You never know. There is the cinch top opening into the main body of the bag. You can kind of see the aluminum frame there that gives it all its support. And then that's the pass through for the drinking tube as well. And there is even, it's kind of hard to show here. Maybe you can see it. Deep down in there, there's a laptop sleeve as well. So that's where my laptop will be going when we travel, because of course I do also have to fit my work stuff in here. That'll be another video. And then it all just cinches up. I usually just run this guy through here, just keep it out of the way, and then fold that up. But before we do that, on the front, there are even more pockets. So this is just a big, kind of like stretchy, flexible pocket that goes right from pretty much the top to the bottom, all the way down. And then another weather resistant zipper into another stash pocket in there, which is the full size of this piece. So lots of room and lots of loops down the side for different things. Usually I've got a carabiner clipped on here um, so we don't lose them. And then of course some hand sanitizer on the outside to keep that at reach. And then of course just the customary straps to hold the top down and close the bag back up. Um, one other really cool thing, not all bags come with this, which I find surprising, but Atlas does. Thank you, Alan. And it is a rain cover. So now this rain cover, it is fastened into the bag, so you don't have to worry about dropping it by accident, but it's also on a clip, so if you wanted to take it off for whatever reason, you could do that. And it is massive. It actually will cover the entire bag, fully loaded out, and have room for your water bottle, and your tripod, or two tripods, assuming they're relatively small. And that, so that keeps it nice and protected. So I know a dirty bag is a happy bag, but I will actually use this um, in places where, like it's just straight up mud, or you know, like fresh cut grass or something like that, or dewy grass where I don't want to necessarily like just get the bag needlessly dirty or wet. I'll drop this down and then be able to get into all of my stuff while the bag itself is protected. So I'm gonna tuck that away. That is super easy. Just fold it right up and roll it. And it's got its own little zip pocket here that it came out of. Just gonna stuff it in. Zip it away. That's right there. And that's how much room it takes up. At the very bottom of the bag, hardly any room at all. So, as I said, this bag is going to be my carry-on only bag. I think we are checking a bag for some bigger items we want to bring this year. But... This bag will actually expand out to a 40 liter pack. So there is a camera cube, like I showed you, right here. But then all of this is all open right from the bottom all the way up to the top. So you can really fill this thing up and then cinch it all down so it's all nice and secure and keep everything safe. Nice big zipper pulls down at the bottom of the bag here. They could be at the top if that's where you left them. But then the whole back just folds up and there we are. So before we get into that stuff, there is some additional storage on the back itself. So there's this nice big stretchy meshy pocket in there. I try to keep relatively thin things in here just because there's already a lot in the back of the bag. So I've got some reference guides for some filters that I have as well as a couple of Polar Pro extra 
cleaning cloths because you can never have too many of those. And I keep my drone pilot registration uh, and my drone registration in here in a nice Ziploc bag. So keep that handy in case anybody has any questions about what I'm doing or if I should be doing it. And then at the top, there's a small zippered, again, stretchy material. This is really well thought out um, pouch and I carry all kinds of stuff. So spare screws, uh, fasteners, there's a spare cold shoe mount there. Uh, some extra SD card adapters, some more screws for base plates, extra thumbsticks for the controller, for the drone. I keep, um, I put these on the batteries for the drone as well. They're the terminal protectors, just as a little added safety measure. And then I also keep the adapter with me to use the drone batteries as a power bank. So if you're not already familiar, this is, I'm sh flying with the Mavic Air 2. And again, I've got that little terminal connector on there. You can actually, this comes with the Fly More kit when you get the three batteries and everything. Uh, you can actually just clip this guy right onto the battery terminal of a charged battery. And then if your cell phone is dead or GPS or something else that you need to charge and you've got the battery and cable with you, then you can charge it up. So you're never too far out of reach. I think that's really handy. I've never had to use this yet, but I like the idea of knowing that I have it in the case that I needed it. I'll put all this back together. And zip it away. This one here, same sort of thing. It's just a little bit bigger. Again, stretchy. So this is where I keep all of my cleaning stuff. Again, I try to be organized, so I keep spares, cleaning, and tools. Okay? So spare cleaning cloth. Again, you can never have too many of those. A sealed cleaning cloth. My small rig tool. So pretty much everything you could possibly need to do with a camera setup. All right there. And then my cleaning kit. So brush and lens cleaner, sensor cleaner, another cloth, all wrapped up in a bag that's way too big. I keep looking for a smaller bag. And then it all just kind of fits in there. And the other more commonly used piece of my cleaning kit actually just stays out in the main part of the bag, and that is my lower. So we'll get that out of the way first. All right, so let's get into the guts of this camera bag and what I'm carrying with me. So I only carry two lenses with me and this is how I would travel with them. I don't carry, I don't travel with them attached or any lenses on the body or anything like that. So I'm gonna keep them separated like this for travel. The first lens that I'm bringing with me is the Sony 70 to 200 F4. I'm gonna carry the lens hood with me, which I didn't think I was gonna use much, but turned out I actually use it quite a bit. And then it also has the Freewell uh, magnetic filter ring attached to it as well for quick and easy swapping of filters. I did a full review on those filters, which I will link to for your own amusement. And the other lens that I'm bringing with me is the Sony 16 to 35 F4, uh, also with the hood and it also has the same Freewell magnetic system attached to it. So the reason why I've chosen these two lenses is that everything that I shoot is within these two ranges. And a lot of people will say, well, you're missing the mid range. Um, and that is true, but I don't generally shoot with it at all. In fact, like when I was shooting with Nikon, I had a 50 mil and I just never used it. So um, if I need to go a little bit longer with this, I can crop in either in post or in camera and really like everything else besides like landscape and um, you know interior real estate or things like that um, I'm shooting with this guy here because I can cover everything from the 70 the 85s that you'd use for portraits the 105s 135s on up to two and then again crop in and get a little bit longer if I need to um, so that's it but the other reason I've chosen these two specific lenses is because they're both 72 millimeter filter rings. Now, that might be a little bit OCD, but 
This is a travel pack, remember? So I carry this with me everywhere, including airplanes, abroad and at home. And I don't want to carry around anything more than I need to. So in that case, both of these being the same filter size, it allows me to use really good filters, justify spending a little bit more on good quality filters because they work with everything that I own. So looking at the filters, I carry the CPL filter from Freewell and I'm gonna bring an extra lens cap just in case one goes missing. I carry the three stop fixed ND filter and the six stop Freewell magnetic ND filter. And this one has another piece attached to the back of it just for storage and transport. And that is another threaded magnetic filter ring that I can swap out what is on the lenses now. And this one has a UV filter built into it. So I don't normally shoot with a UV filter. I don't like having any more glass in front of a lens than I need to, unless it's serving a purpose. Um, but in this case, we're traveling to Costa Rica. We're gonna be spending a lot of time near the ocean, by the beach, with sand, and I have a four-year-old, so I'm just taking that extra little bit of precaution that if we're gonna get into a potentially tricky situation where a lens might be at risk, um, I'm gonna be able to put this on and protect that lens. So that's the only reason I'm bringing it, otherwise I don't even use it, but it's really nice knowing that when you buy the Freewell filter kit, it comes with the UV filter ring that threads in. It also comes with the bear ring that just threads in and it comes with its own filter cap as well. So it's a really nice complete little setup. And like I say, all three fit both lenses. So that's it. Those are the only three filters that I carry with me for the camera, which is the Sony a7 III. I love this. We switched to it actually last year when we were away and I fell in love right away. I love being able to shoot 4K video and amazing stills all in the same body. When we got home, I added the L bracket. This year I am bringing the tripod with me. So it's just a nice little setup. I've got a screen protector on there as well, just for that added little insurance. We're shooting quite a bit of video these days. So I carry my mic with me. This is the same one that I did the review on a couple of months ago and some extra batteries. So in this handy little Velcro case, I keep spare battery for the Sony. I keep spare batteries for Emerson's camera, uh, the GoPro, and then I keep a charging block. This is the same one that came with the Sony a7 III, as well as actually the GoPro's USB-A to USB-C cable, which actually charges the GoPro charger. It charges the camera. It acts as a transfer cable for the camera directly to the computer. Um, it charges the remote for the drone. So it basically does everything. It's the one cable that actually stays in my camera bag. Everything else kind of stays with my work stuff. Um, I skipped over this, the Polar Pro Slate. This is my card holder. Um, I love this thing. It just feels so good in the hand. It's so well made. It's all aluminum and it's weather sealed. So you really don't need to worry about any of your cards being compromised. And I carry spare SD cards for my camera, SD card for Emerson's camera, and then micro SD cards for the GoPro and the drone, as well as if I need to in a pinch, throw a card into the Sony. So um, yeah, so that's the card holder. Uh, I also carry a drone with me. That is the Mavic Air 2. I love this thing. Its size is amazing. It's so easy to fly. So that is my drone of choice. I also really love the remote. It's just so comfortable and keeps everything stored. It's easy. The setup time to get in the air with the Mavic Air 2 versus something like the Mavic 2 Pro, it's just super fast. I prefer this one. It's just so much fun. I did get the Fly More kit. So with that comes three batteries in total. So two extras and I keep those terminal protectors on there, and filters. I use the Polar Pro filter sets for the Mavic Air 2. This is the fixed ND and polarized uh, version, as well as 
the non-polarized variable ND filters. Uh, now, I'm not a big fan of variable NDs, like I mentioned before, um, but in this case, I've got a polarized ND and a non-polarized ND kind of covering the range. In all honesty, nine times out of 10, I shoot with these guys, but I keep these around just in case, and they just kind of slot right in there. And that's it, that's, uh, that's it for the bag. That's everything that I'm gonna be carrying with me. There is a little bit of extra space in here, some pockets that I've made for things like cloths to have them easily at hand. So that's it. Now, one of the really cool things about this bag is that you can actually change the ratio of inner bag and camera bag space that you use up. Basically, this space here can be used in the camera bag or it can be used in the main body of the bag. And here's how you do that. So we pull these, pull these dividers out, get those out of the way. And I've got my bag set up this way that I don't have to move anything else. But I can grab that pull tab and pull that piece in. And now where, where the drone and the batteries were is now extra space inside. So on a day hike, if we're out and we're not taking the drone, if we're going to a location where I'm not allowed to take the drone, there's no point in carrying it around. And I could probably use the extra space for towels or groceries or Emerson's toys if we're going out for dinner, whatever the case may be. And the way the bag is configured now, I can still carry everything that I'm going to use on a daily basis. So I'll show you what I mean. Gotta have batteries. Perfect. Okay. And I've got all that extra space inside. So even through this quick access here, it's all open inside there. So that's one of the other reasons why I really love this bag. And it's easy to switch back. Now I'm going to offer a quick little pro tip here. Uh, it's something that I picked up along the way and I forget by whom or where I saw it, but it's really, really handy and it'll help you keep track of your batteries and their status. And that is these little dots. They're just little stickers that I put on each of my batteries on each end. So one end will have a green dot and the other will have a red dot. And what that tells me is that when I'm either in my camera pouch or looking at the batteries for the drone here. If I'm looking at a green dot, those batteries are ready to go because that's how I put them in after they're charged. Now, after I've swapped them out, I put them back in red side up and then I know that when I get home or back to the car, wherever I can charge a battery, those ones that are facing red, they're done and they need to be charged before I go back out. Quick little pro tip for you. Keep track of your batteries by numbering them and then use the green and the red stickers. They weren't very much money. I think it was like maybe $5 for, I don't know, 500 or a thousand different stickers um, from Amazon. So I'll link to those ones in the comment section down below, but quick little pro tip, keep you organized. So that's it for what is inside my camera bag. Everything that is coming with me on the plane to Costa Rica for six months. There are a few other things that will be coming with us that just haven't found their home in this bag yet and that's only because I haven't packed out the rest of it. Those would be my work pouch. This is my cable organizer and a few other things. We'll get into that in more detail when I do the work video. My GoPro bag, which really is just a little travel case. It's got all of the stuff that I need to keep the GoPro going, bumps, mounts and such. And we take a selfie stick with us. This one is really handy. It's pretty adaptable. It survived all of last year. It's just a little spring mount that you can twist to do portrait or landscape. Plenty long enough. And it's even a tripod. So you can stand it up. And with the included USB rechargeable Bluetooth remote synced to your cell phone, you can set it up, walk away, position yourselves, get your picture or start a video or however you have it set up and it all just fits in there. It's supposed to be water resistant. Didn't try it out, but like I say, it survived last year. It wasn't much money, but it's coming with us. We will also be bringing, of course, the hip belt because carrying all this stuff around on longer hikes in the heat, definitely gonna want that hip belt. Some of these smaller things are probably gonna get stored away in the bag that came with the Mavic Air 2. 
Uh, reason being, when we're not taking the Mavic with us, uh, I want a place to keep it safe and organized so nothing gets lost. There's also some spares in here, like spare propellers and cables and such, just in case. So, a case, just in case. So that's it. Thanks again for joining me today. I really appreciate your time. Welcome to the channel if you're new. If you are, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget the bell so that you get notified when I post some new content. If you've been here before, thank you. Your support means the world to me. If you like this video, hit the like. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, as always, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer anything that I can. So that's it. Now, on to the next one. See you next time.